Despite what their moms told them, they just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This, this, this. is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Sunday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there, join the Militia live on X Spaces for the final segment of each show, God willing. Today, we're joined by Tyler Morona. He's going to stay for the duration of the show. Another lopsided loss for the Orange, 41-3 to this week down in Tallahassee. And the gauntlet that we knew was coming is finally over after three weeks of suffering. And we walk into a bye and wait for Thursday, the 20-something, to head back on the road and take on Virginia Tech on a Thursday night. So we even get kind of screwed with the bye, honestly, having to play on a Thursday. But... It is what it is. Uh, a much-needed break for fans and players alike, as far as as far as the Syracuse Orange football goes in general. And um, Tyler, we're gonna do the the montage. So I don't know if we have any opening statements from anybody. Anyone? Anyone? It's awfully quiet. Uh. Mm. It's really good to see you guys. Um, and I will just throw this into the mix that I think I texted you too. But um, this has been my favorite season of your guys' show so far. I think that you guys are keep getting better. It's uh, you know I'm, I'm a big fan first and foremost. I love your show, so it's always a pleasure to be on. Uh, win, lose, or draw. Um, you know, blood thicker than water, and you guys are family. So hello, good to see you guys. Thanks for having me. How's the dad life treating you? We appreciate um, that, by the way. You love it. Yeah. It's um, it's actually it's even better than I than I could have thought. I was really nervous, but um, it is awesome. Like, I know. could not be happier. So that's awesome, man. We're happy for you. Yes. Um, okay. Well, without further ado, let's listen and see what Coach had to say following the loss yesterday. First of all, Mike Norvell has a fantastic football team, and it's going to be interesting to see going down the stretch in the ACC how this thing uh, finishes. Us being 0-3 in conference, we're not going to be a part of that. But us being 4-3 and and having an opportunity to finish our season strong, we're excited about having the opportunity after we get in the bye week and get some guys healthy and hopefully get, get, our, get, our, get a whole bunch of people back so that we can make this final stretch uh, and finish it with a fantastic season. Okay? Questions? We'll start with Emily in the front and then go to Henry. Uh, Garrett was pulled early in the fourth quarter. Was that like just him being shaken up? I know he's taken some big hits, or was that a performance thing? No, uh, the main thing is uh, Garrett came down with food poisoning before the game. So, and uh, he was extremely dehydrated. We were trying to keep him hydrated. Um, if you even watched him, I mean, he's just at halftime, he was just all sweat and all that kind of stuff, and he had it coming out of everywhere. So uh, it was one of those things where we were trying to keep him going, trying to keep him going, but then it just came to a point where he was just getting too weak in the game, and we just needed to make a change. It was like a past 24 hours, like he ate something bad for dinner last night? It was last night, yeah. First drive of the game, that short fourth down, how much consideration did you think about going for that one? I, would, I definitely thought about it. I did. It was, just, it was too early and too close, and I could just envision – an explosive offense coming back. So, no, I punted it. I think it was like the 30-something yard line, and it was like one or two. Now, we ended up doing, I thought, decent on short yardage, but I just didn't know what the picture was going to be right there. Another fourth down situation, the fourth and six, kind of deep within Florida State's territory. How much did you consider going for it there, and did anyone on your offense try to pitch you on let us stay out there? No. They didn't try to pitch me on making it stay out there, and I didn't think about it. Our, our defense played with a lot of pride today, and uh, uh, you know things happen eventually. When you're going out there and you're going out there and you don't see touchdowns on the other end, there's no doubt that they can get down. But uh, I thought they fought for the most part for the entire day. So I think that was a light somewhere in what happened today. 
Henry? I guess adding on to that, just like with the offense like sputtering, especially in the first half and second half, was it really starting to like wear on the defense? And could you see that on the sidelines? Yeah, but then you 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 see uh, LaQuint scoring for 100 yards against a defense with all those NFL draft choices in it, and watch this, and behind the offensive line that's you know not at full strength. So I mean, there was there was still some fight going on out there. I didn't, I didn't see any quitting the guys. Things they're going to improve in the offense is the defenses that they're going against. All of a sudden, those passes, they're going to be knocked down where guys were wide open, and all you saw was the defensive lineman knocking the pass down without jumping to show you how long they are. Now those passes are going to go through, and they're going to, we're going to find out if the receiver is going to catch the ball or not. But those receivers were open. You're going to see more time based off who the D-line, D-lines you're playing. The quarterback's going to be able to make more decisions, second, third, fourth decisions. I'd be very surprised if the offense does not go back to exactly the way it looked previously. That's what I'm anticipating. All right, so obviously starting from, we'll just start from the, the top on this and, and work our way down. Um, getting people back through the bye, he, he says a whole bunch of people. I don't know who all that is in that group, but obviously I think we're still got our eyes looking to see where Kalen Ellis is week to week. And you hear the week to week thing every week. It just, you know, who knows? So <laughs> it's 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 just one of those things that obviously I think that um, with the way everything's just been going, that uh, the more we have there to shore up the offensive line, the better, obviously. And it's been a struggle. And I, I mean, real real quick too on on the Schrader thing, I, not feeling good or whatever the case is. I mean. Was he feeling good against North Carolina, or I mean, I don't, I, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be, I'm, try, I'm not trying to be a jerk. I'm really not. I'm just saying that, um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm confused. The whole thing's so frustrating. Let's keep these two separate. Let's keep these two separate. Yeah. Um, so, uh, um, if he's not feeling good, he's not feeling good. That explains a lot, right? I don't know. Uh, whatever. Um, I don't know. You guys have anything to say about any of that? I mean, based upon the offensive line play at North Carolina and what it's been like these last three games, I don't know if if it would have mattered, to be perfectly honest with you. But um, yesterday did did look actually uglier on offense than it did in North Carolina. Uh, I don't really know. It, it looked like they were trying to not get blown out and stay in the game as long as possible, which if you look at the numbers – I mean, we won time of possession. The first downs were only 12 to 22. We had a 100-yard rusher, which why haven't we been doing that a little bit more this year? Um, but we were just trying to control the clock and not go fast <clears throat> and allow our defense to get a, catch their breath and not be on the, the, the field all day. I mean, it seemed to me like we were trying to army them to give us a chance. Uh, and that, would, that, would, that was pretty much it. But we couldn't keep up in the second half. And they just had too many big plays. Yeah, well, I mean, the most notable thing, and talked, I mentioned it briefly before we came on, but you know, the first snap for Garrett Trader ended up in a five-yard sack, um, and then on the flip side of that, when FSU gets the ball, they've got two opportunities to recover fumbles, and we don't capitalize on that, and then you know they go down and score. So, but the, to the point of the defense though, like, I don't know, at some point you just get wore out. I don't put a ton on them. Justin Barron's got a club on his arm. He's, he led tackles again this week. So it ain't for a lack of effort. And, um, I don't want to say it's unfair to the defense, but I mean, you, you have to feel a little bit bad for the defense considering they did really try. I mean, there's two big fourth down stops that they got you know what was it 17-3 at one point and it looked like they were gonna go up 24 to 3 and they went for it on fourth down and the mob stopped them and at some point the the break is gonna happen you can't stay you know close as far as scoring it was it was I think they were in what were they on the, the other side of the 50 twice the whole game I think so um, well, before I guess Car- um, Del Rio Wilson came in, they had an opportunity to score a touchdown there. Passes dropped too, so I don't know. I feel bad for the defense a little bit. I think the the score t- 
tells a different story, I think, than what we saw. It just was too long of a game <laughs> for the Syracuse D. Yeah. So. Uh, no, you, you, you pretty much nailed it. You know, and especially as a, a defender myself, like, I was talking to my dad about a high school game that I played, you know, a million years ago now, but our... It was a it was a tough team that we were playing that had a lot of Division One talent on it, and we I remember we were going back and forth, and we finally stopped them by getting a fumble. Their running back ended up going on to play at uh, Nebraska, and we caused him to fumble. And the very next play, our offense goes out there and throws a pick. And at that point, our defense as, as a team, we just said we there's nothing you can do like the other side isn't corroborating our effort and at some point in time like whether or not you want to give up that touchdown it just kind of happens because the morale has been broken and so it's not necessarily like a you know a jimmy's and joe's and x's and o's thing it's just like it's just how football is like if there is not that drive to go down the field consistently whether or not like we're controlling the time of possession but we're breaking the spirit of the other team like that's the thing is like football if we were to score and it's 17 17 and then we stop them and we know that from that time we stop them and hold them to 17 points before halftime and then we go down and make it 20 to 17 the other team just becomes more tense in their play calling their coaching their execution then they get a costly penalty then they fumble and then we it's like it, the offense isn't giving the Syracuse orange the opportunity to capitalize on what the defense provides to them and so I really feel terrible for the defense because like they're not afforded the same opportunities that they give the offense and so it's it's really discouraging to watch when um, it's clear that we do have a good game plan and I don't think that we're like awful like we're not terribly coached in the way that like, hey, you know, we're running on third and 28 or something like that, you know, like boneheaded to sit. Like, we don't take a knee when we're up and going to win the game, and then Georgia Tech causes a fumble, and then they throw it in. It's not like we're not looking into that. Like, we're just – we're our spirit gets broken when we can't convert anything, and then it just takes a toll on the whole roster. That's what it, that's what it appears to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a trickle-down effect. I mean, it's um, – it becomes – it, it, I mean, yesterday was. I mean, I, I was at the UNC game. It was hard to watch. This was this was just as hard to watch to me, just from a fan standpoint. And it was, um, you know, they held it together a little bit longer, right? But you could see the writing on the wall, and it didn't take long. Like it just the the first offensive drive for each team kind of set the tone for the entire game from there on out in my in my opinion so um well it was different for me because at north carolina i didn't think i was that was a halftime and i'm like there's no way oh i mean there was and at least here it was 17 to 3 and it's like okay if we can get some second half adjustments or something happen um but clearly obviously it gets to 24 to 3 late in the third and you're like i don't think we're gonna do it here but you know that's to, to tyler's point i mean the defense I mean, what that does without scoring, especially when you make big plays. Uh, first off, I think they were a little frustrated because they had a fumble that touched like four or five different people that they didn't get. There's an interception that, t- that bounced the, over the, the four, one at the goal four line, or five different people, yeah. right? Um, so I think that even some of the bigger plays that they could have had momentum wise that they didn't come come through with, I can think frustrated them as well. But um, Every in that situation, every single because Florida State's going to beat you, right? I mean, Keon Coleman's one handed catch, ridiculous. Nothing you can do about that, right? Um, you know, we they had some big plays where they broke. It's Florida State, it's going to happen. But when they don't score, those plays are magnified like they're huge mistakes. Oh, Isaiah Johnson can't guard this guy. Well, you know, he was a five star receiver last year. Uh, they came in and it was it happened like one or two times, right? But it gets magnified when our offense does not score any points. Um, and then again, uh, to Tyler's point in this situation, you got to keep it close and put pressure on the other team because that's when they make mistakes and, um, offense didn't allow us the chance to, uh, to do that. And another caveat in there, two penalties for eight yards yesterday. Yeah. No penalties in the first half. There. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you would think in that type of environment, pretty easily, easy to commit penalties. 
whether it be the pre-snap stuff or, you know, getting burned and, and holding or whatever. But, yeah, they did a good job. They didn't get a single flag in the first half. It was excellent. So uh, it, that's the, that's kind of like our point sometimes. It's like you do one thing really good, but everything else is, like, mediocre or bad. Like, you need every, you need all of that. Yeah, you have to have all of that to even have a shot. Um, there was a couple fourth down decisions that had to be made. And, you know, the, the first one, I put both of them in the montage. The first one was was obvious. It was a fourth and one. I mean, the game was, it was, was it a three-nothing game? I can't remember. But it was an easy decision to punt there, right? Um, the second one, however, it ended up being a missed field goal. I mean, I don't know. And for him to be, you know, he was very... He was very curt with his answer, saying that I didn't even think about it. I mean, I think I would have thought about it. <laughs> I mean, I know it's fourth and six, but you're the closest you've been to the end zone all day in fourth and six. And you kick a field goal and, and you end up missing it. And it's just like, I don't know. It was one of their penalties, too. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, and I, I just don't know. Right. It was fourth and one and it ended up being fourth and six. Right? That's what it was. Uh, yeah. No, it was fourth and six, and then we ended up <clears throat> having to move back five yards. Oh, but that was during, yeah, but that was when they were kicking the field goal, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm saying it was fourth and six and instead of even kicking the field goal. If it's me, I'd be going for it. it but um, yeah. I'm not the coach, and I don't know. But, uh, it, you know, that's kind of one of the things that just kind of – perusing through social media I, I saw a lot of that and this isn't a new thing where we question coaches in game decision making right and you know we've had a couple of these moments so far this year there's been a few last year I mean it seems to be a, a, a point of discussion quite widely on social media and even in writings and things like that so um, I don't know. What do you guys think? You you, you punt the, or you uh, try to kick a field goal there and put three on the board, or you try to gain some momentum and do something and try to get into the end zone and get the first down and keep driving because that was the closest they were all day with Trader. Dude, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, does it really does it even know. matter? I I don't think it matters. But doesn't it seem yeah. like I mean you're gonna go kick a field goal there? What's it do? I mean, at least if you go for go for it, you're like trying. It seems like to me, from my point of view, you go for a field goal there. It's just like, all right, well, I mean, let's just kick a field goal. I mean, they, you, if it's a turnover on downs, it's not like a, a huge deal. Yeah, I mean, we talked about this. Every, I mean, <laughs> every fan can do this to a coach in every game. It's a hindsight situation. Okay, what if we try? It's not hindsight. It, that wasn't okay, hindsight. Yeah. Okay, what do you mean? If he tries, okay, so if he tries and he doesn't get it. Then you don't think there's fans there that are like, what? Did, what is given Babers the reason to think that we can convert a four and six? Just got to get points on the board, right? I mean, it's, no, it I would talk, but but I, but but it's my. That's why I call it my opinion because in my opinion, that is not an argument in that situation for me. That's yeah. not. That's that's just in my opinion. You go for it there, and you at least try. And if you don't, you you, you don't. It it, it, it it is what it is. But at least you tried to do something. I mean, the, uh, well, they went for it and they didn't make it. That's a dumb call. The, whoever says that is an idiot. I think that's a dumb thing to say in that situation. That's, that that doesn't that's make any opinion, sense. Right? Okay, that's fine, yeah. Just um, playing devil's advocate, I mean. <laughs> okay. Um, no, I, I, I agree with you, but I think the, the fact of the matter is is that, I, you know, the, the pressing question there is, is like, why, why can't we convert Anything third and <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, well, that that is the question to me. Is like, okay, when we know we're in the the red zone for the first time, or you know, however deep we were, the furthest we had been, and you know that in order to keep this drive going to ultimately win this game, we can't pull out a third and seven play to go move the chains. Like, what is our winning play right there? That's to me. And granted, like we texted about yesterday. Last year, I know the play that we're running. Aron is lined up in the slot. He runs a drag route, and he just catches it over the middle or near the, the boundary sideline, and we move the chains, and, and we go. 
And then last year we would have a, a little fake off that, which is a zone read to Tucker. You pull it and then you throw it to your slot guy going on a slant the opposite direction. So, like, again, I don't know if when around it, it went down, we were just like, well, the playbook's gone and we, we didn't play like we're, you know, I'm going to cuss. But, you know, it's like we're now fucked and we didn't plan all offseason for fucked. Like, that's kind of <laughs> what it seems like in these big situations. Right. And so because um, I've watched enough professional football when one guy goes down and that's the offense and they're just like well let's get a high draft pick and we'll start next year like that yep. that's just how you know it, it is playing out. i'm not saying that's what they're doing it's just that's how it's playing out yeah and and to be perfectly honest with you there were certain games last year that we didn't really compete in and we had an nfl running back in sean tucker an nfl receiver in aranda gas and an nfl left tackle slash left guard, left guard now with matthew bergeron so i mean yep. Schrader was surrounded with NFL guys, three NFL guys, and now there are zero. And <laughs> I mean, it, it makes a big difference. I think LeQuint could get there, and I oh, think yeah. that um, there's other guys that could be there one day. Um, and s- sneaky, a guy that might get there one day is Dan Bellari. But um, to your point, they're not the proven commodities that the other guys were. Like. Matt was probably a first rounder if the quarterback situation, like if there wasn't like 10 guys that went up in the first round, because the Cowboys said that they were going to take him at 29 or whatever they were, 28 last year, but they ultimately needed a defensive tackle more. But they said that they had Matthew graded higher than the defensive tackle, Mozzie Smith. And so really, in reality, he was a first rounder. But now I'm just getting to draft nerd and stuff. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's the thing is I'm not saying that Enrique Cruz can't get there, but. He's he, but everyone knew that his first year starting this year, he wasn't going to be Matthew Bergeron what he was last year, right? So, well, no, no, I mean, it's so that's you are just Matthew Bergeron. Like those are the the two best left tackles we've had in the last twenty years, probably. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> finishing up the montage, you know, you heard Coach talking about well, he he's hoping or his expectations are that this offense looks like it did be- before this stretch of losses, and I mean. Look, I guess we'll see, and uh, hopefully we get some guys back. But the one thing, you know, that's frustrating, I don't think many people thought we were going to pull maybe more than one upset out of here. But to be as uncompetitive as we were in these three games is really the frustrating point. And, you know, I think that it's this offense does look okay moving forward and and we're going to see a little bit more of what we're used to but you look around the ACC yesterday and um you know you got you know Pitt <laughs> upset in Louisville you know it's like ever there's there's teams that have their day when the last time Syracuse did something that they weren't expected to do was like 6 years ago now at this point so you know what I mean. So it's like, yeah, it's 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 starting to dogpile. It's it's frustrating. And when you think about going into the rest of the year, like those, a lot of those games are. If they win, they're not going to be like tremendous upsets or anything. I mean, I think I think every game the rest of the way is is quite honestly pretty winnable um, from my point yeah. of view. So I mean, you know, you kind of miss the shot to to shock anybody but i you know i think it's inevitable there's a bowl game in the future um and i think getting a bowl games is important uh you know no matter what they are i guess but you know you can be picky about it i'm starting to get picky about it i just want to see this team be competitive in games that they shouldn't win like we understand that they weren't going to go in there and beat florida state but you know if you put if you score touchdowns that helps <laughs> you know i mean I'll give us some- watch right like I, why would i watch something that that gruesome in the fourth quarter right you know it's um and and you know i man we had clemson i really do think we had the winning formula against them like our defense matches up so well against that team every year and yes we had the isaiah johnson miss sack and then we club Nick hit through it into our defender's chest plate three times and we dropped it and yeah. we gave the ball back to them three times in a row. And so, like, to me, 
that was like the one that we had that we gave away. And then from there, the other two teams, we just did not match up with. And so that's, that's going to happen. There's going to be a couple games, no matter who you are, unless you are Florida state right now, but we're not a top five recruiting class in the country right now. So you, you can't. Uh, not even I did. In I did. Yeah, did prep some notes though for this. And because I wanted to just put some perspective on it, which is, in these games against top 10 teams, right right now, we look like a group of five team playing a power five conference schedule. In, against the other opponents, we don't look that way. So I just wanted to put some perspective around it. So let's, let's go across the country and see teams that I would say are close to Syracuse's like um, profile as far as a, a program. So we'll even go, I'm going to start with a uh, the Baylor Bears. They're a private school, but granted, they have a rich recru- recruiting area. Um, currently, they sit at two and four. The Cincinnati Bearcats, very comparable program. They're two and four. Um, UCF Golden Knights, three and three. Um, okay, so what's another school that reminds you of Syracuse to me? I would say the Illinois Fighting Illini and the Northwestern Wildcats. Illinois is three and four. Northwestern's three and three. Um, let's go down the list even more so. Um, another great program that reminds me of Syracuse, incomparable, high academic, and football is not the the main prize in that area. The California Golden Bears, they're three and four. Uh, Vanderbilt is never going to ever, ever get, compete in their conference. They're two <laughs> uh, So, like, we actually are Stanford. doing better than our peers. It's just hard to see that it's that way. It's hard to see it's that way. I mean, in in I think the I think the compounding issue is just getting blown out. Right. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's perspective, and and you know, you lose, you lose. I guess you, you know when it's by one or forty one or thirty eight, <laughs> you know, it is a loss is a loss. But you want to see your team put up a fight. And the other thing too is that you know it's frustrating to. We do fan feedback every week. It's that's, you know, you think we'd be used to it and have and, and seeing the negativity and things like that. But it, when it, it's just this, it's so redundant and boring. You know, and you can't even get original with your insults anymore. So it's just one of those things. It's embarrassing. I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of embarrassing. That's all. That's all. But we knew this stretch was going to be tough, and we you know, we move on. I think that Syracuse has got a shot to win. You know, I picked seven and five to win the year uh, uh, for the preseason um, to finish the year seven and five. But some people see eight um, wins, and I mean, I don't. You know, I don't. I wouldn't argue with that right now. We'll have to see what happens in in Blacksburg. They go from there. As far as I'm concerned, Florida State and North Carolina are on a collision course to the ACC championship game. Uh, you're talking about two teams that have <clears throat> NFL quarterbacks, uh, and great talent around them, and, I mean, a possibility of making the, the playoff championship. Every Power 5 team that's in a conference, obviously a Power 5 conference that's comparable to us, has those three or four teams in their conference that would blow them out. And or you'd have to play very, very well to even stay close to them. Um, and other than that, I th- like again, I think what's concerning is is when you sit here and you watch two weeks in a row when we're playing possibly the two best teams in the ACC, and we're watching Virginia Tech get better every week, and Pittsburgh get better every week, and Georgia Tech get better every week because they're playing comparable opponents in which they can make steps and to, to get better and, and to like what we said, always, you know, kind of evolve as a team and get better on offense and defense. And it's hard to do that when you're playing against teams that have playoff, you know, <clears throat> college football playoff aspirations and so many NFL players on their team. I mean, yeah. This, this conference is so bizarre though, because you look at it and now Miami all of a sudden who was a playoff hopeful when they beat A&M is now 0-2 in this conference. Mm-hmm. This team from... Pennsylvania that resides in Pittsburgh is two and four. Um, Wake Forest zero oh and three in conference, and somehow the Yellow Jackets, like you said, are two and one. Like, it, I, I don't want to play comparison to justify Syracuse, but the fact of the matter, it's it's a wonky year. You know, it really is. And so I'm trying to, and really, this is the thing. Also, this is really this really bothers me a lot because I was once in this position um, of being a player, and 
the 26 and seven year olds that are playing right now are skewing the landscape of college football so yeah. much. Like yeah. it's not talked about enough. Like there's 18 year olds that are playing on Syracuse against 27 year olds. Like this, this is not next year when all those guys are gone. I'm really curious to see how college football goes back. Like it's like Jordan Travis, isn't he a six year? Like all these yeah, guys that are, he's, that are seventh years, like you should not be here. Just, so this yeah. is an unrealistic look at how things should be. Yeah, and in and, and North Carolina and Florida State are two of the better teams that took advantage of that stuff. I mean, you look at Florida State, I think they what did they they returned 94% of their defense production from last year and 80% of their offense, right? On top of throwing on the fact that they had the number one transfer portal class with 12 commits in the ACC and then the number three overall recruiting class, right? So when you looked at – when I, I just took a look at their their depth chart and – you have what six, seven, seven starters, based upon like I said, overall eighty-seven percent return rate of production for their whole team. That was ten and three last year, and they still replaced or brought in six or seven transfers that are are on the one deep that are starting. I mean, you're looking at a team that built themselves to win a, a national championship this year, most likely through a lot of NIL money. Yeah, right now. So I get it, man. It's just, it's frustrating. It's really, really frustrating because um, it can be done, but it's not being done by us. Yeah, right. And comes down to, I mean, we had a discussion in the, what the hell was it? Was it the post game or the preview? I can't remember. I think it was the post game. What, yeah, okay, I thought so. Um, about, you know, how Syracuse moves forward, okay? So we, are, we, we, can, we can look and see how Syracuse finishes off this year, and that's great. And I think there's a, like, we all are in agreement, I think, that there's opportunity there to get to, get to you know, seven and five, eight and four, something like that, right? Um, what do we do next year? <laughs> what happens you know, you can bag on Schrader all you want. There's Del Rio is not holding a stick to Schrader, in my opinion. And and so you've what what do we do? You know, you have to you got to start. You got to pay a freaking quarterback to come here. How do we do it? Yeah, you, know, you need receivers think- too, because I don't think I mean Aronde is not going to do a you know a, a farewell tour. I don't believe. I mean, if he can go, he's going to go. I don't know, man. Um... I mean, it wouldn't surprise me, but these days, that's just unlikely. He can probably, from what I under have come to understand, I think he can make it worth his while for one year with us um, to get his draft stock back up to where he guarantees all that money back to himself. Yeah. Um, um, Williams, number 10, the quarterback, I actually think he is the future. I, from what I've seen, very glimpses of, I think he's the youngest guy. He has the highest upside of what we have, but we need to bolster the talent around him. That's right. what, really what it comes to. Are you talking about the incoming freshman, or are you talking about Davis? The, oh, maybe it's Davis. I'm sorry. Um, the guy from South Carolina that came. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, the one that's behind... Del Rio. Uh, Del Rio Wilson, yeah. Mm-hmm. Braden Davis. Okay. Because we got Jakari Will- Williams coming in. I think he's a four-star quarterback from Georgia. That's going to be the – yeah, so you got the – but either way, I think we got talent there versus what we used to used to have there. Agreed. But we definitely need Re- receivers to yeah. Sean's point. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, they – I think it's, there's talent there, but, man, I, I don't know. I mean – that's, it's hard to 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 say. I, I was trying to pay more attention to it yesterday, but you just don't. They just don't show it on TV. You know, it's it's just not a it's it's non-existent when you watch a game on TV to see the separation or route running and all that stuff. It's just not there. So you kind of have to speculate about it. You know, but obviously, at the, yesterday too. I was, there's I was no, curious on. I wanted to see the downfield so bad yesterday. To I know, me too. There. I was like, that's all I want to see right now. They do. Uh, ACC does like a command center thing, and it's it's a little hard to follow though, really, because they they block this thing off in like four different boxes, and I can't watch a game like that. 
Oh like, yeah. <laughs> you, you, yeah, I watched. I watched it for the first quarter yesterday, and I had to stop. I had to. It, yeah, I, I got just up. give me the full screen view, the the broadcast view. I don't want the freaking drone way up here at the other end zone. I still can't tell what's going on. And then you got the stats at the bottom. It's like, you know, I got I got enough ADD. I don't need to be like watching that type of stuff. That'll send me into overdrive. I had to change it. So. Um, Because you can go watch on ACC Command Center or I think it was NBC if it was the game or something like that. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was trying to look too and just to kind of get an idea. But, I, you know, you, you couldn't really tell. But um, with that said. We're back to stopping. There's just too many things. I mean, I think that I think that we have talented receivers, but I think they're all kind of just like really good at one thing. Right. I mean, I just don't we don't have a short passing game unless it's like a screen or a swing pass or something like that. Like, I don't see the slants. I don't see like the curls, nothing like that. They're all just go deep and I'm just going to back shoulder fade you. Yeah. Like, on, the, on the sideline. This is like yeah. The smallest window possible. Right. <laughs> That <was> impossible. <laughs> it's like the most ridiculous. Like, that's what I mean. You can't you can't complete a slant, but you complete all these ridiculous sideline catches throughout. It just it makes zero sense to me. And to go to your point, it gets better when we can start retaining our talent. Yeah, well, that's what I, I mean. The big teams, you know, Clemson, Florida State, yeah. those guys, yeah, they lose tra- – everybody's going to lose transfers. But Clemson and Florida State, they're losing guys that aren't playing. Right. That's, and that's what – yeah, They're exactly. accused we're losing – we lost four or five guys that would be playing, if not starting this year, this past year. Yeah, they and would that's be – a whole different conversation of whether or not it was the right decision for them. Personally. And we don't know, but, right? We don't know any of that, so we're not going to speculate on it. But if you take that out of the mix and you just look well, at one what's of in front not of you, the team anymore. Yeah, so. I understand that. We don't know what happened, and he left. You know, he had an, an issue here right before he announced. You know, two days before he announced his going in the transfer portal, and that was ended up in that LaQuinn Allen situation, right? So we don't. Who knows? I have no idea. But yeah. I mean, without with, with you know, separate the the personal stuff and why why they are doing what they're doing or why they did what they did, they'd all be starting, as far as I could see. Yeah. So. And then you get those you get the top twenty five, top 30, 35 teams. They're <clears throat> retaining their talent. They have higher recruiting classes than us, and they're bringing in better transfers than us. You see what Tez Walker did last night? Transfer from yeah. damn Kent State, ridiculous. Yeah. That just bolstered North Carolina. Both of North Carolinas, their top two receivers transfers mm. yeah yeah he's a talented guy i mean he was he, he his numbers at if i remember look, uh, when i looked his numbers at kent state were actually pretty decent and i think oh, yeah. he was a, he was though their first wide receiver there too and he left you know to just i mean obviously a talented guy and you know i just want to catch that break you know i want to be able to Put something together. I don't know. We talked a lot about the money. You know, Tyler, you've got some. You put out a video that was it? I think it was after the Clemson loss in regards to uh, NIL stuff, right? Um, how do we get the money here to do what we need to do in basketball? As far as basketball is concerned, they already ran off a, a millionaire. Uh, told them they they don't want him around. <laughs> don't keep your money. Uh, you know, how do we how do we get these guys? How do we be competitive and starting behind the curve? Someone who's been extremely outspoken on this about this on Twitter is Josh Black. I don't know if you guys have seen any of that, but he's been all over it. So do we want to talk about this live? Because I feel like this conversation is going to go pretty deep right here. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's do it. Time to hear from you. Time to hear from you, the loud mouths from the loud house. All right, you guys know what to do at the end of every game, or maybe there's, I don't know, five minutes left. I ask for your thoughts on that game, and then you leave them here, and we talk about them. And today we've got, uh, we've got Tyler here, and so he's going to give us some, give us a little bit of insight. We were, we were going to have a discussion before we went live about um, about, you know, w- the monies and uh, such that it takes to, to get people on this roster that can make a difference. Because that's what everything's come down to. We had a conversation on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever that sh- day that show was, 
where we discussed, you know, said issues. Um, and, you know, Josh Black, was he's been very vocal on Twitter about letting Syracuse, letting fans know that, you know, this is what needs to happen. We're way behind the curve. Let's get this started. And how do we get it started? Tyler's here. Um, he's tried to reach out and do some things, Tyler. How is that going or not? Um, so at, at present, what we're just trying to do is formulate our game plan as best as possible. So, um, you know, I've, I've made outreach and I've heard kind of the requests of those that want to give and what they're looking for. And so what we're trying to do now is just like the biggest thing with NIL that's different from years past or like the idea of NIL that's awesome to me, especially as a former athlete is that like it's a two-way street right so like i can as an athlete like sign a, a sign a jersey sign a helmet and get you know re- remuneration from that like right. payment back from that service so what we're trying to do is just find those those partners and what service that our athletes can provide and then from there what what i want to do is do a better job at explaining to the general public like why these guys should be paid like why are they in this position playing football is it for their family is it like is this nil money just going straight back to their families if so that's a that's a much better story to get behind for a lot of people than i'm just trying to line my pockets and if you are trying to line your pockets what's the harm in that either so um you know really what we're trying to do is create a story and um and a narrative for our guys to be able to latch on to so that the general public can help get behind them a little bit better and ultimately um you know keep them home and show them why Syracuse is, is the the place to be yeah okay good so it's a process which is expected it is i mean it's never going to be overnight you know um i was hoping that my plan was you know over the course of 365 to make this you know this impact so um it was never going to be something that i was going to be able to do overnight but we have some um some things in place and i'm, I'm excited to see where it goes so more, more to come okay all right we're gonna leave it there for right now okay yeah. all right fair enough all right let's let's have some fun i'm sure there's just you know extremely intelligent comments that are going to come off of Twitter from yesterday. <laughs> so let's dive right in. Right. Uh, at JH 33, Dino is not a good coach. He's probably a fine high school coach, but completely incapable of coaching at this level. He's cheap and agreeable. Set the school, set the school keeps him around. Until SU and AD decide they're done being a bottom rung m- mediocre football school, nothing will change. Okay, well, strong thoughts there. You know, you can make an argument that the rest of this season could. De- oh, we were here last year too, so maybe you can make an argument. I'm not saying you can or can't. I'm saying you probably could, but. You know, with that said, you can make an argument probably in regards to the rest of the season for Dino Babers, right? Is that fair? Um, Some of the decision-making, questionable maybe, or um, obviously being competitive and getting in the win column. Like I've said a hundred times, and I'll say it again, I think Syracuse makes a bowl game. What what is the – where's the standard need to be, right? And the problem with changing coaches is where – where's the next coach come from? And then we gotta start all over again, right? So we gotta get, you know, you probably have new offensive, defensive coordinators, and you know, the, you know, then we're rebuilding again, right? I mean, I don't know. So um, Norvella took him four years, obviously a school that's a little bit more prestigious and just traditionally get better recruits, right? And it even took him about four years to get where they're at. So. If that puts anything into perspective, I mean, I think that's kind of my point. I don't know. Um, drastic move if if Syracuse makes a bowl game and finishes with with between six and eight wins. I don't see what Babers does to not retain his job. But all of the fire Babers stuff is wide open again. Of course. <laughs> so, of course, yeah. along with... Well, you know, when's basketball season start, right? <laughs> yeah, that's the typical go-to. Yeah. Right. Or, you know, we should go join the Patriot League, right? So, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those things where, 
it's just expectations, realistically. I mean, they change from game to game. We talked about it. We did the preview. I mean, we guessed we 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 gave our guesses of, of the season, and I don't even know if any of us really thought we were going to be four and three. Um, maybe at best, one of us did. Um, so yeah, I mean, I just I don't I don't understand. And the people that <clears throat> blame the coaches and everything like that, they're out of touch with with what's really going on and which what we really need to to compete. You know, we need to retain talent, we need to bring in better talent, and we need to be able to compete nil wise. Bringing in a coach at this point is not going to do anything. At Saltine War, uh, Tyler, anything to add to that? Um, nah. At Saltine Warrior Four, uh, Dino and the offense didn't seem to want to try to win this game, and that's un- unacceptable. The next five uh, give us a chance for a great season still, but hard to see it going smoothly given how incompetent they have looked. Okay, so this is a conversation that we kind of had before we went live, and um. Does, you know, if you listen to Coach's press conference yesterday, his expectations are that this offense is going to look as it did in, you know, before these three losses after, you know, once we get past this by and, and through these next five games. Because, I mean, the offense is only going to be, they're only going to get what the defense is going to give them most of the time, right? So we've been playing some pretty talented defenses in, you know, the the, the Jared versus uh, you know, I mean, that guy's a freaking animal. I mean, golly, like wh- how, wh- you know, only if we could have that, you know what I'm saying? Like, how awesome would that be to get a Jared verse? You know, someone to just come through Albany. I mean, that's crazy. So um, now he's he's playing for a team that might have a championship run, national championship run. So, um you know, the next five will, will show what this team has and what kind of adversity they can come through and what kind of resolve they have. And, you know, I don't have a, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that, that they pick up where they left off. I, I don't. But as to Joe's point that he said earlier, you know, these, the pits and the wake forces, you know, these, these teams are getting a, are, um, they're getting better. Not, not really Wake Forest. Georgia, Georgia not, Tech. Not, Georgia not Tech. Wake Forest. Not Wake Forest. They were terrible last <laughs> night. Yes, uh, I think there was some there was some banter about you know uh, comparing our O line, and I was watching that game. I'm like, you know what? I mean, theirs is pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. So, <laughs> um, but uh, you know, with that said, what do you guys think? You know, we we knew we were going to lose these games. Unfortunately, it was by leaps and bounds. We've scored, what, 10 points, 10, 10 to 81 to 10 the past two games. And what is it, like 116 to 20 over the past three? One, yeah, like 112 yeah. to 24, something yes. like that. Something like That's that. That's a little thing, yeah. Um, for numerous reasons. Granted, Clemson, we literally gave him three touchdowns on the one-yard right. line. Yeah, <laughs> we'll take that for what it's worth. Right, right. But, um, man, you know, I I really will just tell you that after that, and I knew, and I've never had a bigger meltdown than the block punt for a first down, and that <laughs> right there just sank. Oh, I know. That's when Clemson beat us twice. That's when Clemson beat us the third time. Third time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, and to go back to, to Jared verse, like, if I were in a position, if I had all the money in the world, I would just be, I would find that. I would be like, okay, we're just going to double, triple, quadruple down on our defense. Like no one scores on us. That's what that, that's where it's like, okay, regardless of what we have on offense, if they score zero and we score three, we win the game. So, uh, cause I think it's right. more likely that we could bring in these guys that, um, like if we can get one, like, I'm not saying we're gonna have Aaron Donald, but like if that guy was just out there and he was, you know, from New York or whatever, like that's the guy that I would be going after. So, um, so yeah. Yeah. At J Carpenter 74. This is where I thought they would be before the season started. Um, knows where, I don't know what this means now. Oh, now is where we find out what kind of team they, um, they are, they can win three to four games down the stretch, but will they? Um, I think they do. Well, I mean, I've, I've said it. I already, I've already given my predictions on that. You know, it, they are going to have to shake this off and put it behind them. And thank God that there's a, there's, you know, some time in between um, that FSU game and Virginia Tech. I mean, 
to some extent the the buy was perfectly placed <laughs> um not knowing right <laughs> yeah right exactly because we knew it was going to be a gauntlet like that. You, know, you play seven straight weeks, and the last three and your first three ACC games are against those three teams. Like, come on. You're going to be beat up by that point. This is definitely a well-timed buy. And um, like I said, it's like we talked about it last week, a refresh or a restart button, right? you got to find some wrinkles in that offense. If you got to start riding that running game a little bit more with LeQuint, um, you got to do something different. You got to show them something. You got to show all these other teams something different because the last three defenses have pretty much given the rest of the ACC the uh, defensive template to beat our offense. So, what do you got from Facebook, Joe? Anything? I'm just trying to sift. I'm trying to sift through for yeah, yeah. Some uh, no. So I mean, just, just like similar original. to that one, you know, uh, Johnny Carlin looking at the schedule before the year started. Four and three is as good as it could get. I think the frustration comes from the way things have gone the last three games. Had a shot to win against Clemson if we didn't spot them 14 points. and should have been more competitive in the last two. That being said, bye week will be huge. Need to come out and play well slash beat Virginia Tech and win at least three of the four of the remaining games. You know, And then to that said, I mean, if we do that, then I think that obviously I know that the fans and, and everything about this team would completely turn around and completely change. You know, I mean – you, you this fan base is all just in the moment, instant gratification, and it's it's really, really that's that's the thing that I'm more more just sick of than just watching two blowouts and you know us you know did I want them to play better? Yes, but we've seen this as fans over and over again. We know what this this playbook is, and you should be smart enough to know that these three teams are different than the last five that we play. So. So I guess I'm kind of curious about it because we're talking about the schedule maker now. And I would be curious, like, let's say the schedule went like this. It was Clemson, we lose. And then it was Wake Forest, we win. North Carolina, we lose. Pittsburgh, we win. Florida State, we lose. Um, Georgia Tech, we win. What would be the temperature of the fan base at that point? You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's so different. Completely It'd different. be different, yeah. Um, and it's just compounding week to week. That that's and it feels that, like it's gotten worse I, I each agree game. With you, Joe. And I agree with you. I just it would be interesting to see what it would be like under a normal year. But it has never been like that with our schedule. Mm-mm. We always are like, who can we screw? Cues. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and, and and look to 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 that point too. I mean. Three out of the last four years, there been it's been a string of streaks, right? I mean, I don't even want to right. talk about the COVID year, which is one of them, right? I mean, that was one in – I mean, that was ridiculous, okay? But last year, to win six in a row, then just to lose five in a row, you know, and then this year, start 4-0, and oh, and now we see 3-0. and oh, I think that there's just some PTSD going on with some of these fans, and I get it. I understand, but, you know, just keep it in perspective. I mean, last year, we didn't lose five straight to teams like this. A couple of them were like this, but it wasn't it wasn't five straight. Um, there's some stuff. There's some banter in the in the spaces. Tyler, from uh, our buddy Dom here. Tyler, does the Chancellor care if the sports programs succeed? It's not his first priority. <laughs> right. Okay. Which which sports which sports programs are we talking about? I think it's a gen- You're talking about the just ones that, the ones that bring in money or the ones that send athletes to the Olympics. Right. Yeah, I don't. Well, here's here's one last thought I have. So basketball coming into this season had the number three portal recruiting class, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Could be four. Three, top top four either way. Proves it can happen. The first thing that happened the day that Beheim retired. It was like the post of Beheim's retirement went live, and then Starling's commitment went live. It was like literally mm-hmm. <laughs> those things happen. So it. Westry was I, not far behind. This has anything to do with selection. I'm just saying that it can be done, and despite all odds, we can still bring talent here. So whether or not a guy upstairs cares about whether the programs do well, it still can be done. 
Yeah, it absolutely can. And I think that the one thing that we have good positive on the basketball side, right, is that I still think that our basketball program is more nationally respected. Um, I think that basketball recruiting in state, obviously for high school, is way better. I mean, yeah. Starling's from that area, and and obviously Autry. I mean, and his coaching staff, they got great relationships with those kids around the area in the DMV area. Um, but you know, you still you look at that Jesse Edwards situation. I mean, we weren't even yeah. we were half a mil away from what West Virginia could give them. You know, and that's like to to my point, what it is for the longest time we spoke about it, right? The fans were like, oh, give me oh, – we deserve a, a good a good program. Give us a watchable team, and then we'll show up. Then we'll spend our money, right? And we would be like, well, no, you got to show up so the recruits can – well, guess what? Now NIL's here. So now that question is completely gone. Right. You, there, is no, there is no more – there is no more, oh, we deserve a program. Like the community and the fans and the boosters and the alum, they're going to they're gonna make something happen so that we can get this – you know, we can get this talent or they're not, and we're not going to be good. So this whole chicken and the egg thing, like, I'm sorry, but everyone's got to, you know, think about it. 20,000 people give you $100 just one time a year. That's $2 million, right? If you don't want to go to the games, if you don't want to buy a season tickets, you know, you don't want to spend those $100 to go to a couple of the football games, give your $100 to try to get talent there. Because that's where it's come down to now at this point. It doesn't matter what coach. You know, we're not a respected pro. We're losing our talent. We can't even retain our own talent. So at the end of the day, it's not a chicken and the egg thing now. If you're a fan, if you're a booster, if you're an alum, and you want to be good, then you have to you have to help. You have to put in, and we gotta we gotta create nil money so that we can get kids here because that's the name of the game now. Uh, at Tully forty four, Tully T forty four. How hard can it be for a defense to prepare for our offense? Swing pass, RPO, quick middle slant, or deep pass down the sideline? We're way too simple. Still love the orange no matter what, though. Well, we kind of talked about this, the, the, the small window down the sideline or, you know, these things are too simple. We, I think we mentioned in the last show about watching the first couple of games and be like, man, I can't wait to see Syracuse open up that playbook. And then, like, nope, that, the playbook was open. That's what it is. That's what we're doing. Yeah, uh, yeah well, uh, that, that shit closed real quick with the Liz Frank injury, I believe. Yeah, well, I mean, that's true. But, you know, you've got a guy coming out of the backfield that's pretty talented, too, as a receiver. And, <laughs> and um, you know, he did, by the way, I mean, obviously he did tremendous yesterday. But, um, you know, to get more creative there is one aspect. And, you know, we, we can beat a dead horse still. Again, <laughs> but someone's got to step up and catch balls. Okay. I mean, golly, let's do it already. Um, what else you got on? I, I got sidetracked through something. So hit me up with some Twitter or some Facebook stuff, Joe, if you got it. So, uh, Brother Alex, I think he had the same sentiments to what Tyler was going to. We just never really rebounded after the Clemson game. I don't know what it did to these players or how it affected them. We just flat out have not. It feels like to me personally that we knew we couldn't hang and it showed up on the field. Blame the whole team, players and coaches for not competing. Really just hard watches, but the refs were a little better. Uh-huh. The, the refs were better. I was I was thinking that yesterday during that game. They were good. But also, Syracuse was only called for two. It was a relatively clean game. Let's put it that way. Yeah. On both sides, like it was just a relatively clean yeah, I think clean there was game. only eight penalties the whole game, so... That's really good. Um, I have I have one. I actually have an interesting one from Tony Q's Water Boy 2.0. What do you think has had more of an impact on SU's injuries over the past few years? Turf, lack of nutritionist, training staff, combination. Um, All the above. I would say. Um, if you believe in a God that he doesn't want all of our players to be healthy every year. And, uh, the, the second thing is, um, it, it is a combo of all of the above. I really don't think that it has anything to do with like size versus speed in a way. I do think that, um, a lot of the, the roll-ups and stuff that happen are becoming more common in the NFL. If you look at the injury rate in the NFL right now, it is outrageous. Like every year when I do fantasy football, I asked to have the draft set the day before the first regular season game because 
there's like 20 ACLs that go between the first week of preseason and the third week of the regular season. And so it's just a matter of fact of how it gets played. And like our guys go to the NFL that do move on. And it's not like they're like the first play of the year. They're just like obliterated. And it's, Oh, well, his career's over. Right. It's like Cisco's had a, a long career. Trill has had some unfortunate injuries, but that's just how it goes. Um, like Matthew is still playing and starting and whatnot. Um, you know what I mean? So it's like, I, I can't, you know, pinpoint it to one thing other than the fact that like, there's just been some circus injuries and, um, yeah, some of our guys are smaller, but, um, other teams are small too, and they don't have 20 injuries a year. So I don't know, man. Yeah. The injury report in the NFL this week was ridiculous. Trying to do my fantasy lineup today was stupid. So, yeah, I mean, you know, and also too, I mean, and this might just be, um, conspiracy or, but I, I know that I was thinking about this a few years back because, you know, as they've been going through and I know CTE concussions, you know, high hits, targeting stuff like that that's obviously an issue but i was always worried about you know if you if you if you look at one side too much like people are going to start just diving into people's legs right like oh if you're going to just if you're going to get me for going high every time then i'm just going to start going low and i don't know if that's just a conspiracy of why there's been more injuries come you know probably less concussions but more acls you know, more knees and, and ankles and stuff like that. Um, I, I don't know. Um, let's see. I think that that, that conversation has passed. Um, at David7W, why did Garrett Trader start if he was dehydrated, had food poisoning while giving up against, while going up against the best pass rush seemingly in the country? I don't have an answer to that. Best option still. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's one of those things. Like best option still. You know, you, you get it. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, I hate that conversation. I mean, to me, the, the that's a uh, that's a. You're, I'm leaving it up to Garrett, and if he says I'm good to go, that I'm gonna believe him as a head coach at this point. For as gutsy and as and as tough as he's played as a captain, if he says he can go, then Babers is gonna let him go, especially on the road against Florida State. Yeah. He's, this is it for him. Like, you got to give him the ball. You know, if he's a starting pitcher, you know, you got to give him the ball. Me at seven, Nolan Ryan, me at 70 percent is better than your bullpen guy at 100 percent. That's, you know, that was his old saying. So, um, was he 40 percent? Was he a hundred? Obviously, it wasn't a hundred, but I don't know. I've never had food poisoning and played a football game. I don't know what that's like. So, <sighs> certainly don't know what that's like after you go from probably what 60 degree uh, central New York and it was not. <laughs> yesterday in the south so i don't know what what that's like i mean i know what it's like now but i haven't played on food poisoning and on that trip so um it's like the number one call out excuse that i deal with oh man i ate something okay (laughs) well i mean sure you did as a a call out as a contractor absolutely Ah, i ate something i ate something man i feel good yeah 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 Okay, sure. Well, are you, you ins- are you insinuating something, Sean? No, I'm I'm not. I'm just saying. Okay. I, I don't know what to think. Look, I don't want to speculate on any of that. I don't know what to say. I don't know if he's making excuses. I don't know if he's really sick. I don't, I have no idea. So I'm not going to g- go either way. You got to take for you got to take it at his word, right? I feel like you do. Right. I don't know. Exactly. I feel like it's. Would a coach make that type of excuse to save his player, though? A coach. I That's think a good question. coach would. I think a good yeah. coach would to take some heat off of him and not have. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. I, I think that. Okay. I think that is a uh, not a not a, a, a out of the realm of possibilities. And if you're if you're a coach and you got a player that is getting hammered the way Garrett Trader's been getting hammered and. It's already discouraging. It's already already demoralizing. And why wouldn't you? Just to take the heat yeah. off him to end it, okay? We got a yeah. we, we got some days off. We're gonna come back, you know, and we're well, gonna and start also to over. Protect him too, right? Yes, I mean seriously. Protect him the last quarter. Gets to this bye, right? We know it's a reset of a new season. We're four and three. I mean, it can still be a very positive season for sure. So I can understand all that. Yeah, I mean, I would. Yeah, think about it. I like your kids almost as if you're a coach or you're a leader of any group. Right. You don't 
You want to protect your people. And right. you'll do whatever you can to protect your people. So it doesn't matter. But with that said, I'm going to go with what Coach said. I'm just, you know, it's a something to think about. At Baptized by Fire 7, we lost big on the road to the number four team in the country. Duh. If this happens against Virginia Tech, Boston College, then I'd be angry. I'm disappointed. But picked us to be four and three at this point at the beginning of the season. Yes. I mean, yeah. You know what I mean? It's chalk at this point on the schedule, I feel like, right? So um, it's just the some of the the ways that it happened, right? And those are, I mean, we couldn't get one of those games at home. I mean, what the hell? <laughs> you know, it sucks so bad. You know? <laughs> right? I mean, we played in Tallahassee last year. We couldn't get that a home game? I don't care. Um, I don't care. I know. Or not gotta, last year. Last time we played them. I'm sorry. To be able to separate those three games. And honestly, um, like I said, I'd be back after this week to talk the fans off the ledge. But uh, after a bye week, and if it's anything comparable to what we saw the last two weeks at Virginia Tech, then that's when you start to worry, right? Different conversation. Yeah. Right. Definitely a different conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, at Drew Cuse, Dino Baber, Dino Baber's offensive guru, uh, at our files 90, Dino can walk home. <laughs> oh man. This, this, Those, yeah, yeah, there's just, some bad ones. Like there's some yeah, bad ones like that. Yeah. Um, at our Boris nine, um, 48, three was his prediction. Not too far off. I mean, yeah, that's a hell of a guess, right? We, I think it out, huh? he might have been one of those. Yeah. You, hey, man, when you're that close, you, you let everybody know about it, right? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. Q Salum 44. Wish the offense was run like the defense. The defense plays to a system where less talent can still have a chance and play with heart. Offense looks like Iowa where they can't move the ball. I mean, yeah. I mean, I think there's more talent on the defense. Can I go there? Is that okay to say? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, what else you got, Joe? I'm pretty much I done. I got some. Here, I'm going to roll through a, a bunch of real quick negative ones. Um, here's a J.R. Sardo. Pay for a good coach. That is all. Gerard Thomas. This is where I got the uh, – join the Patriot League for crying out loud. <laughs> Mark Roger. We suck. We suck again. Oh, Greg Rayner. When is basketball season? Tommy. We blow. I don't think we suck, by the way. I think we're way outmatched with some of these teams in the ACC. Way outmatched. Pretty, by the way, and we killed them. So it, it goes to show that like we don't suck. We just are somewhere in between being a national title winner and the bottom of Power Five. Right. Where that is, I don't know yet. <laughs> right. And that's not to say there's not other power – like other like less than Power Five teams, you know, other than Power Five teams. There's some that are better than us for sure, but – yeah, like two two lane might be better than us. You you don't know because like you know I mean like or when Louisiana Lafayette was going undefeated, my coworker played for them. Like they had several NFL guys. Um, oh yeah, so, you know what I mean. So like that can happen, but they also are in Louisiana where like every other guy is a four star recruit. Right. So it's just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, let's see, Bob, maybe we suck. John Foley, not good, and John Ruffing. Dino Babers needs to pack his bags and hit the road ASAP. Oh boy, here he is, Dominic from North Carolina. And How his, you guys doing? And his mail truck, no, no doubt, right no, or something. No. I, I don't know where you are. What I'm are you... in my kitchen. I, I had surgery on Tuesday, so I've been I've been out of work. Oh okay. How you doing? You healing up okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to have a a, a venous ablation. They had to do something with my uh, my varicose veins in my left leg. So I'm I'm doing all right. I just they don't want the stitches to pop. That's why I can't go back to work. So it is okay. what it is. Gotcha. What do you got for us today? Seems legit. All right. So, so now with Tyler on, this is what I want to ask because I didn't play high. My dad wouldn't let me play high school football. I obviously was not recruited to play sports anywhere. That's Bobby Boucher. Right. So, but my son, (laughs) no, football was not the devil. He he might. (laughs) Football. Yeah. (laughs) The, The true answer is my dad was a single dad and he'd have health insurance and he was paranoid. That's really why he wouldn't let me play. He, Makes he, sense. He told, yes. So, um, <laughs> Fair. So, 
so my son tried to play D1 baseball, and the recruiting process with that, I've been told, is very different than football. Mm -hmm. So, Tyler, this is what I'm asking, because I don't understand either these big schools are just cheating still now just with NIL, but it's, because you're in, you're in that space, what does what, what does the collective do? do? Do they go to – does Dino go to a five-star offensive lineman to a left tackle that is obviously going to be in the NFL, and you could tell that as a se- junior or senior in high school, and offer him, and then the NIL collective says, hey, wink, wink, nod, nod, if you come here, we got a million bucks for you. Because I think the only way that, that – we, Because I think that our fan base is upset that we're never going to win the ACC championship, and I don't feel like we can. I don't feel like we can compete with the Ohio States or the Clemsons and even the North Carolinas now, and I'll tell you why that in a second, living here. Like, it was news everywhere when, when Tez Walker, and Joe, you know this, the AD stepped in and threatened to sue the NCAA. Mm-hmm. Like, no one in New York is doing that for Syracuse, yeah, they, and the fans are all upset. Like we're on a different playing field, yeah. than everybody else. Priorities. You should be we're ch- glad we're to that get we kids have not eight wins, play. right? Our fan base should be like genuflecting at Dino for eight wins. I really feel that way. It's really they have no idea this little three one five bubble about what the rest of the world is in college football. Freaking SMU. Got what? How much in donations after they said they were joining the ACC? Like it's in, it's in, it's insane. Uh, we know they can get donors, right? It is insane. That's why I say that. The, that's why I ask you because I just don't think the chancellor gives a darn. And I'm I'm keeping it clean for your podcast. You can. Get- I don't think he cares as long as the ACC that twenty that fifty million twenty six whatever it is check doesn't bounce at the end of the day and he can come in and he can put on commercials on TV that, that freaking Joe Biden went to Syracuse or that the Dalai Lama speaks there <laughs> or that Bob Cox has graduated. No, I'm serious. Both of them sniff I'm, kids, I'm, by the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I don't think he cares. He's, he has this Ivy League mentality and this is what a, a, uh, at ECU, the guys with Texas A&M now, he's in a, he's in a and you can probably look it up. I don't want to say his name. Okay. But he was a, a basketball coach at ECU. He's he's at A and M now, and he told me the pers- what people look at Syracuse. Really good coaches want to coach there because they feel like the the academics part of the school does not give them the backing that they need to be successful. And he flat out told me, "I won't coach there." He goes, "I love Red. I love Mac. I love all those guys. They're great guys. Great coaches." Those are the guys that will be able to take Syracuse forward because they love Syracuse. They, they, they're, they're those guys. But in football, we don't have that. We don't have that kind of coach that could do that. So Dino's here trying to build this program, try to bring three stars, make them five stars, and I get it. And then when they're five stars, they go get stolen from other schools like Linton, like Chestnut, and then they don't play there. And hopefully that that is something that, but we don't have Harder. advocates, and, and, and we don't How know do what get, they're getting paid though. And they they're they, they, quite honestly they getting paid more money and getting to are not getting, but having to sit on the bench for more money. I mean, right. Look, it's so, chasing so, it's chasing dollars at this point. That's the right. name of the game. So the fan base, and this is what I'm gonna, the fan base that does just say awful things about Dino when they really have no college football IQ about what happens in the real world, right? So we need the Jimmys and Joes, and that's a, that's a Dino statement, but that's a football statement. That's the same thing here in East Carolina. They're ready to send Mike Houston out on a rail here after they finally went to a bowl game last year, okay? Being one in five or one in six, whatever they are here, right? But you see, the difference here is that ECU should be able to compete in the AAC with the talent that they can, they they should be able to compete for championships there. We cannot compete with the other schools in the ACC to bring those five, four or five stars in to compete for ACC championships. They don't want to come here. We can't offer the same things. Now it's we can't offer the same things with NIL. We can't. We just can't offer a freshman a million bucks to come in and play left tackle for us the way other schools can. It's not fair to do that to Dino. It's not fair to even to do that to Wild Hack. And that, that's just how I feel. That's why I want to ask Tyler, do you think, And it, because you're working in this space. It only took 10 minutes to get to the question, but here we go. <laughs> right, right. Here we go. It's what we, this but is I the moment we've all been waiting for, Dom. 
The question needs context, though, okay. guys. Like, how is Syracuse going to get into that space, or can they? And then how do they sell that to the fan base to get butts in the seats? Like, I, I don't think they can, Tyler. I, I really don't. And call me cynical or call me, you know, if you want to. But I, I find it very hard with a, a school that has an enrollment with 18,000 students every year that they're, they're going to be able to f- catch up with, with and compete for national titles and ACC championships. Always insightful, Don. Thank you. The current prescription, no, we are not giving any offensive linemen a million dollars. And if we did, you would know about that or you would see the difference in talent obviously come in. But um, your first or your premonition is correct. I mean, that is how this is going to go. There's also legislation passed this week that the school can finally step in and actually start directing funds and kind of skirt this collective deal to a certain degree. So that'll be nice. Um, so, I mean, at present, what it's really going to come down to is going to come down to alumni that are um, or, and or just supporters of this area that want to make an investment blindly into one day hoping that it's going to change, right? So to Joe's point, chicken or the egg situation, it's got to come from the, the egg side, whereas like it's got to be belief without seeing. I know Dino used to preach that all the time, but um, yeah, really, I mean, saying that's that. going to have to come down to. And we're going to have to rely on the fact that to say – if you come here and you make this decision that you can go and be drafted in the first round, just like other guys that have been, it's been done before and it will be done again. Um, you just have to make the choice to do it here. And I think that there's other things that go into this too. Whereas like Houston, Texas, where I live and Syracuse, New York do not resemble each other as a major metropolitan. Right. And so as we get more, like as Syracuse develops more, as the community develops more, cause they're doing all of that right now, it's just, it's, it's going to be over the course of time to say, Hey, look, here is a product that is more sellable and we're catching up. The problem is, is that what we need is, is now, and that's not you know feasible right, right now. Like we can't change the roster today. But I don't think that it's impossible moving forward. I just think that we're going to have to do it with, instead of having 10 five stars and 44 stars, we're going to have to do it with 24 stars and the rest being three stars. Like, we're just going to have to win games with less. It's just the way it is. And we're going to have to have one or two special guys. That's just the way it's going to have to be if we want to compete at that level. And then maybe those five stars will. Another thing, too, is that. When was the last time Syracuse, New York, or the Central New York area produced two five-star guys? Produced. I don't think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, here's the well. Let's say let's say LeQuinn Allen, let, because he was the Gatorade Player of Year in New Jersey. He was the mid three-star. Those ranking systems, number one, if you're from New York or New Jersey, you they they just oh they're from there, so they 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 give them a lower grade. And here's the other thing. When you get to finally get a four star who says I'm going to go to Syracuse like the quarterback um that that gave a verbal, they dropped him so much that now he's a three star. Like it, it's right. So that's fine. It doesn't matter. It's all about his talent right. though. Who cares about the rankings right. that they come in and do well? That's that's right. that's the point is that like, it right. do, it's just about talent acquisition. We're in the talent yeah. acquisition game regardless of what their stars are. Right. But I also uh, Tyler, think that sometimes high school? with high school students it's perception. So the perception with high school students, because, you know, e- even with my son, when he was looking at, at like when he first was getting recruited, like his freshman year, when when Boston College was. And they were kind of having conversations, you know, because the rules are so weird, you can't really talk to someone until they're a junior, but you could send them a million emails about a camp to let them know how much they like you. Right. So and 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 every time you get a new email about how much the camp costs, it's, it's less and less. That's kind of like what we were taught with baseball. That's how you know that they like you. And then so like he's like – and so then he's getting email from NIA schools and he's like, oh, I don't want to go there. It's an NIA school. Like it's all about perception. So when 247 reduces guys when they go to Syracuse, like it means something. Like it's, it's, it's all – I feel like sometimes the system is just so, so like against a school like Syracuse that, that – I feel like sometimes it's just impossible, guys. And I don't think it's fair to the players or to the coach. And and I said it I said it on the Brian Higgins show yesterday. I said if Dino was the coach at Florida State yesterday and the Florida State coach was the coach of Syracuse, I think it would have been the same outcome. We would have lost forty one to three. I really do. 
We might have went for it on fourth and sixth, though, instead of kicking that field goal. Well, I, I just <laughs> – he may have. Dude, Dino looked exhausted in that press conference. and he had a, I've never seen him so – maybe once before when guys were just going down like flies at the beginning of last season. But it, it's it's got to be like as a coach, like you do – you pour everything into kids and do everything you can – to get the program better. And it's like, you just throw your hands up. I feel like at the end of the day and be like, what else can I do or what else can go wrong? And I felt like that, that's how Dino felt yesterday. That's just me looking at him in that press conference, but I don't know. Tyler, I appreciate it. And, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. All right. All right, Dom. Appreciate Tyler. you, man. Insightful as always. Thank you. All right, Dom. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, Tyler, were you speaking of, um, high school recruits yes. as far as five stars? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't – I mean, off the top of my head, I know that there was one – I think Marquise Walker back when I was, God, in like eighth grade or something. He ended up – he was receiver at Michigan, got drafted by Tampa Bay. Uh, he went to Henniger. Uh, I think Greg Paulus. And He's he ended CBN, up playing right? basketball. Yeah, and he ended up playing basketball instead of well, he playing for us too. Well, he played, yeah, he played quarterback for, yeah, for a year. Yep, yep. Yeah. And then I know that we had the likes of um, Mike Hart, uh, mm. Damian Damian Rhodes, Latavius Murray. Right. But but in the twenty plus years that I've been, you know, twenty five years that I've been in high school, now, like those are like the only ones I can think of. Right. So Listen, not a lot. Yeah. Point remit. Like that guy. If <laughs> to to actually give Dominic some credit here. If there was a five-star recruit from Central New York, that guy would have to run like a four-flat forty. Like there would have to be no doubt that oh, this yeah. guy is going to be the most generational talent of all time, like mm-hmm. Campus or Andrew Luck. And even if it was Andrew Luck, they'd probably be like, "Well, I don't know. Well, let's let's wait and see." So, um, just the way it is, man. Uh, Tyler, Tyler's got baby duty. So I do. if you if you've got to go, you go ahead and go, and we will wrap this thing up. I want to thank you for coming on and joining us for uh, since the beginning of the show, which has yeah. been a long time so far. It's about an hour, and, about an hour and a half. <laughs> so I appreciate it. You go enjoy that little one. Give the wife a break, sure. and uh, as always, and you do stay in touch. We love you, buddy. And uh, I love you we'll, we'll, so much. We'll, we'll get love you. Buddy. We'll get you back on soon. Okay. Okay, go All right. orange. All right, go orange. Thanks, Todd. Appreciate it. Uh, let's let's just do this real quick, Joe, and head over to um, the spaces again and uh, get a. We got our boy uh, Luke at Level Up Luke on Twitter, and uh, one of the insightful voices we hear from from time to time. Luke, South Carolina, right? That's where you're at. Yeah, yeah, Charlotte, you know, uh, right on the border here. Oh, okay. Um, What's going on, man? So, yeah, uh, well, I mean, do you want a little context, uh, just a question, or do you want the full dom? I mean, you give me – the full thing. Yeah, you give me what's, okay. what's going to be <laughs> make the most sense right now. Let's hear it. Awesome, man. Well, uh, as long as uh, Spaces keeps me on here. Um, yeah, so with, with this uh, season, I, I think – a lot of fans, it's a very reactionary fan base, right? Like every week, it's it's whatever we saw in front of us, we're gonna overreact to it like crazy, right? Uh, more than more than a lot of comparable fan bases would, I, I think. Um, the, uh, just keep in mind context here: we lost almost our entire coaching staff last season. They're all at different <laughs> schools. We brought in completely new guys. Rocky Long, I think he's killing it, man. Our defense looks strong. I think we're competing yep. with the big boys. Rocky Long's now, kind of a legend, man. I mean, yeah, he's awesome. Absolutely. We lost two all-conference defenders, two or three, and we're still killing it on defense. We're holding up, but they're not getting any support from the offense. Um, you know, we lost some guys on offense, too. Our offensive line is not performing well. That's not to say they're not a good offensive line. We just have some injuries. We've been shuffling guys in and out. I don't remember the last year I could say Syracuse's offensive line is performing well because it's like we, we always have this problem every year. Uh, you know, if, if our QB can't sit in the pocket for more than a second, a second and a half and make a decision and make his reads, he's got to bail outside of the pocket, throw on the run. 
our receivers are dropping passes. Like, what do we expect? That being said, the question I want to, you know, ask here is why all the hate for Dino? We, we start off the season so well. It seems to be an offensive problem. Why are we not talking about Beck? You know, is should we shift some of the blame maybe off of the head coach and onto the side of the ball that is not keeping up with the competition? Well, just to, to play a little devil's advocate to your point is that what I've heard is a lot of the, the recruiting stuff. And my answer to that is you have to have money to recruit now. Okay. And I mean, I, to- I totally agree with you, but I think it's a, it's a, at the end of the day, it's kind of a talent issue. I mean, you, you I mean, I haven't, you're right though. I have not heard Beck's name mentioned for the chopping block. It's always just Dino, and I, I I appreciate the you know the breath breath of fresh air as far as Dino goes because I don't really fault him either on what the offense is doing. I just think they've been completely outmatched, man. There's obviously probably some things that could be done different. Uh, maybe some of the play calling, uh, just you know maybe some of the in game decisions, all that stuff. But I mean those some of that stuff it wouldn't have made a difference these last three games. And like I've said, I'll beat a dead horse again. It comes down to being competitive. I just want to be competitive. I just don't know. I just don't. If I expect to lose to give me a shot is everything in the world to a fan to be competitive and not get embarrassed to, I wouldn't even say three weeks in a row. I don't think the Clemson game was embarrassing. The last two weeks have been embarrassing though. No, oh, yeah, and we talked about it earlier in the, in the show. A lot of it is the offensive line. You know, we right. Tyler spoke. Tyler spoke of us having probably the best offensive line we've had in over a decade. Dungy senior year when we went ten and three, and then the very next year it, it looked bad with Devito. Devito looked good when he came in um, when Dungy got hurt with that offensive line. Next year didn't look so good. Next thing you know. You know, he goes and transfers, and he has a great year at Illinois, and now he's on, I mean, to, to, to Tyler's point, he's on an active 53-man roster in the NFL tonight. So um, you got to have a good offensive line, and, and, you know, to also go against that to what um, Luke said, I mean, recruiting, the coaches you have affects recruiting. Um, Money affects it more these days, though, I would argue. Well, money does, absolutely, but there are still the relationship aspects of it as yes, well. Uh, um, yeah. And, and you know, and, and to also throw that out there, people talked about wanting to see the old or, you know, what the offense looked like earlier in the season. And we we're talking about the offensive line. You know, we do have to remember as well that, you know, when we look at the transfers, our best transfer was David Wildbaugh Jr., who came in and shored up that right tackle spot. And Joe Moore, the the graduate from Richmond that we had come in as well, Mm -hmm. was supposed to be that right guard to shore that up. And Joe Moore has not been able to be healthy yet this year. I mean, he's played a little bit sparingly. And obviously we saw Wallabout was playing good until, you know, his season ending injury. So, you know, we can't sit here and act like the coaching staff didn't try to make some moves to help to help that area. I mean, you got to imagine coming in, you know, you figure you get those guys, they can come in showing the offensive line. We know that LaQuint can come in and he can um, be comparable, or at least, you know, he's got his own skill level to where he can do some things out of the backfield to, to kind of replace Sean Tucker. And we expected to have a Rondé Gatson. So, um, you know, there's some people will call it excuses, but I think that there are reasons why our offense isn't looked as great, especially considering the talent that we've played the last few, few weeks. Yeah. I mean, we were all at that UNC game. I left after the third quarter. Couldn't do it. I saw him give up on the field. Um, so I, I completely get where you're coming from. We all want to see a competitive team. Uh, sports at the end of the day is entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't want to watch a game and feel bad. I left that UNC game and guys, I was feeling bad. <laughs> it took me hours uh, maybe even the next day to shake that off. Like I was just, uh, man, crushed, crushed by what I saw in the field. It's Cause we, none uh, of us, none of us, I don't think we're expecting that. Yeah. We were there right? too. And we left early too. Yeah. I mean, we weren't expecting that. I mean, we, ex- we expected, I expected a, 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 a competition and sports is entertainment. It's the, it's the, it's the, you know, the Coliseum. 
you know, <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're probably not going to see that Taylor Swift era's tour in theaters. You know, we're going to go to the stadium on Saturdays <laughs> right. and watch our guys like th- that's our, uh, you know, event that we show up for. Um, but we want to see the team show up, too. <laughs> we don't want to be the only ones there. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a solid, solid point. You know, and mm-hmm. with that said, like I opened, well, I didn't open the show with it, but as we were, um, you know, um, bouncing off of the montage, you know, the defense did what they could. Despite the score, you look at the score and you're like, man, defense gave up 41 points. Well, they did what they could until they couldn't. And they were put in a lot of bad spots and they actually came out on top. You know, that that fourth down in particular before the half when uh, FSU was going for it within the, what was that, like a four-yard line. And they stood strong for four downs and didn't let them get in there. And the half ends at 17-3. to three. I mean, like Joe said earlier, they ha- they had a shot at halftime. You have go into halftime thinking, okay, well, you know, this is still – somewhat competitive game and could get better going in the second half. Unfortunately, that's just not what happened. And I I think that the writing is, was on the wall for that. With that said, those games are over, and we all need to move on. The Fire Babers thing, I've never been a fan of the, the Fire and the Head Coach stuff in general. Um, I do, however, think that something's going to have to give with them. We didn't get a lot out of Tyler with the NIL stuff. I, I, I wish... Um, he would have given us a little bit more of his, just his thoughts in general on it, which I mean, I think we are on the same page that is, this is a, this is, this is a money business. Be careful there. Yeah, I know. I know that. I think that this is, this comes down to money now and we got to get the money. If we don't have the money, we're going to get left in the dust. I mean, go, go check out Josh Black's Twitter page from starting it last week through today. And uh, I mean, I love that guy so much. He's <laughs> what a good follow. You guys got to follow him. He's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you so you've been paying attention, right? So, yeah, he, he just followed me back last week. I made my day. Nice. <laughs> well, there you go. And and he is a great follow. And he does. He's doesn't mince words. And he's you know, he's been there, done that. I mean, I mean, he was he was a super senior, you know, came back, felt like he had something to to prove. And he did it with Syracuse. He didn't have to come back and play for Syracuse, by the way. He could have done, he could have probably been anywhere, right? So um, he did that for, for the team and the, and the fans. And I just think that uh, an unselfish person in, in, in you know, I, I, with his insight, uh, you know, you've got to take that into consideration when you see some of the things that he says. You know, along the lines, and it's out there, you can see it, along the lines of, you know, SU has the money. Why aren't they paying? Well, that just tells me that it's not priority for them. And, I mean, Tyler said as much, right? So, it's just not priority. So, what's the priority? I mean, (laughs) it's so frustrating. Like, growing up in Syracuse is all we had. It's all we had was Syracuse sports. The game has changed tremendously. And we're falling way far behind way too quick and if it doesn't i don't know if there's a recovery if they don't get on it they already ran off a millionaire i I mean shit or get off the pot i mean what are you gonna do you know start a gofundme can we do that start let's start an nil gofundme it seems legit (laughs) right i mean what the hell Uh, it's just it's mind-boggling to me it just, I, I don't, I don't understand why, you know, they played the high road on this whole thing ever since the start of it. And we all know that this is what has gone on since the, since our entire, for our entire lives. This is how the NCAA has been run. It's just been behind curtains. Now the curtains are open and everybody's playing by the same rules and you just can't get in trouble for it now. And no, we come out of this thing, afraid to play. right? And we came out of this thing two years ago, going, "Well, you know, I mean, we're gonna we're we're better than that, and you know, we're above the fray in so many words." And now they're behind, and it's like, "Let's go, shit or get off the pot, man! It's time to do something." The the new facility, the the upgrades to the dome, I mean, 
think about if you take that and you put that into some, well, and I know that it's probably not all donations, right? And it's, some of this is, is their money and they're technically not allowed to do that. But I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. There's no way everybody's on the up and up on that, on that whole thing either. So, no. right. Hell no. Exactly. It's money, man. It's money now. And it's money. Fans, and that's it. The so fans are gonna get what you're gonna get what you what you give at this point. Yeah. So maybe we I, buy I got one more. Go ahead. Luke. I got one more quick thought, and then I can uh, I can just hang up and listen. But um, not to sound too much like Brent Axe, but oh boy, uh, we are not. Uh, we're not the bottom feeders in this situation. Okay. There's we're not. a lot of kids in the G5, in the FCS levels, the JUCO transfers. There's a lot of those guys who would love a scholarship to Syracuse. You True. know, keep in mind, we can't, we can't go after every talent. We have higher admission standards than a lot of schools. Uh, we're not quite Stanford, but we can't get every talented guy that we come across. We just can't. That's a challenge for basketball, for football. Um, you know, and as far as NIL, slowly but surely, uh, I think we're on the right path there. But we have to go after the guys that are more diamonds in the rough. And we have consistently outperformed our recruiting rankings. Yeah, we uh, as far as you're the right. ACC competition. Well, I mean, a lot of that comes from transfers. Yeah, and how how long can you keep that up though? It's a- absolutely true, but it's also like you look at it as far as the you know the we called past couple of years we talked about how Syracuse is a stepping stone school for coaches. Well, it's kind of the same way when you find those diamonds in a rough and they can be stolen from you or recruited off the team to more money or better opportunity or maybe a climate change or whatever the case may be. Right. So again, it comes down to the one thing and we all know what that is. Now I think, um, you know, I think there's a lack of interest. It's money, bro. Yeah. I mean, uh, to it's be you. perfectly honest with you, like finding the diamonds in the roughs is three stars. We've been good at the Dino's been good at that. Yeah, very you know? good and, at it. And the the whole point of it is is that that's that type of stuff is going to help you be able to compete against the big boys faster now, especially if you can spend the money. It's retaining the talent uh, and, and that was still my being point. able to go out and pay for some of these guys to come, like the four and the five stars, when it comes to recruiting and everything like that. Um, if you've got it a, is really where ooh. yeah and if you've got a, a <laughs> take Sean Tucker for example okay there's one that you know we were lucky to have him while we had him and then ended up going pro okay then you look at like the deuce chestnuts or you know guys like that where they just Cisco leave, the C- Cisco well C- right yeah but I mean I'm talking about transfers that that you're oh, talking yeah. about keeping talent and not and it's one thing if you go to the NFL, it's another thing if you go to another school. That's my point. Right. So, you know, when it comes down to is if they're going to another school, obviously, I think geographically, sometimes that personal preference, sometimes that's going into it. But it, it's coming down to money, guys. It's coming down to money. And we're going to yeah. we, we that's it. I, I'm tired of having the conversation. And until I have, you know, until we know and we have more information and I don't, I don't follow Syracuse blogs or Syracuse.com or any of that stuff really. Um, and I don't know if they're writing about it or what's being said about it. Joe, I know you, you pay attention to all that stuff. Is, is it even being talked about? Is the NIL stuff and how we are as far as the NIL goes, is that even being talked about? Cause it seems to be like the biggest focus that we've dealt with as a podcast the past i mean what a couple of years know, but I, I mean a couple of years joe we've been talking about it for a couple of years the same we we talk about the same thing over and over again i think it's starting to cuz to to what we spoke about before and everything like that when you i mean this stuff is only going to help the big dogs now yeah it might it might fix some of the middle the middle ground stuff when you're talking about the best players or the best sorry the best teams they're going to be getting the best players. They're going to be getting the best players coming out of the transfer portal. They're going to be getting the best players coming from recruiting. And then they're going to be able to still retain their talent. So at the end of the day, all this is going to do is, okay, maybe, you know, there's 15, 20 schools a year that can, you know, compete. And then everyone else is pretty much going to be on the same playing field. So, uh, no, I haven't seen a lot. I think it's starting to come um, up a little bit more. I saw on Twitter 
uh, you know, big game boomer who's a pretty good follow. Uh, you know, he excellent follow. Yes. What's that? Excellent follow, big game boomer. Uh, oh yeah, and he so he tweeted yesterday at three oh three. Dino Babers had a good run, and Sarah at Syracuse, and he's a super nice guy. But this thing has run its course. It's the same story every year. Change is needed. Um, and you know, you go through and you look at a lot of those comments, and they're talking about who's going to replace them. And the well, that's my about question. Coach, Cope. Some people are talking Coach Orjan. Some people are talking about Dan Mullins. You know, um, it's just. And then I, I scroll down here and I get to Ultimate College Football Pod, which uh, obviously is college football podcast. But you don't say. Yeah, but he comes back and he says they're in good shape for their first back-to-back bowl season in a long time. I think their problem is more administrative slash geographic. Well, we've talked a lot. Well, we've beat the the administrative point a number of times, but we've also touched on geographically. Like, it's a tough place to be in the wintertime. Well, and not only is it a tough place to be in the wintertime, but again, I think you have geographically there's there's multiple things there, right? Because then also, too, you could talk Taxes. about... Well, you can talk about taxes. Taxes. You can talk about gas prices. NIL, right? I'm sure they're <laughs> going to have to pay the taxes on that. But also, you can go all the way to cost of living. You can go to the fact that we don't produce a lot of Division One recruits that want to stay close to home in football, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, when you talk geographic, that is – there's There's a bunch of there. stuff there. Yeah, It's a whole it's, lot easier to go to a school in Florida or North Carolina, which is – what we're seeing with these Carolina schools, these Carolina schools are doing a pretty damn good job. They're doing a pretty damn good job lately. And um, right. you know, but even a Texas school, you see some of these oh, teams yeah, like absolutely. Texas, San Antonio, Texas, some of Houston. Te- te- talk about fun. local recruits though in Texas. I mean, they're they're a dime a dozen Dude, there. You're talking about local recruits. You're talking about the fact that none of their NIL is going to get taxed. You're talking about good weather. Mm-hmm. Right. I yeah. mean, there's a lot of things that you're talking about. So realistically, like, yeah, there's, you know, like I said, we, it's all the way from politics to economics to weather to, you know, obviously location of the best high school recruits. Right. So there's a whole there's a whole umbrella of stuff there when you talk about geographics. So and, and uh, here's he has, the other thing. I mean, yeah. hey, a good point. Look on the bright side, guys. I didn't even know Luke was still there. <laughs> Sorry, with global <laughs> warming, it's going to be nice and uh, and warm and, and cheery all year round in Syracuse pretty soon. Oh so, yeah, well, we got that going for us. Well, I, I was told <laughs> that I was told that in ten years the the world's going to catch on fire, so it's not going to matter. I'm just waiting for that. I'm waiting for those those uh, cold winter nights to turn into nice spring nights, you know, in in Syracuse, right? So, hey, you know, there is an upside. So. Oh yeah, right. Because I mean, at some point, we're not supposed to. Syracuse is going to stop. It's going to stop snowing, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. that's what. That's, that's great. That's exactly that is great. It. And all the oceans are rising, even though all the millionaires are buying oceanfront property. I mean, yeah. Hey guys, all those all those Florida schools are going to be underwater, so that's less competition for us, right? That's true. Oh, that's why they don't have to pay taxes. That's true. They're screwed. Yep. Yeah, full disclosure, I wouldn't care if California fell in the ocean, though. We could cut it right Um, off. Cut it right (laughs) off let it float away. I mean, you could even raise it up to Washington and Oregon at this point. Yeah, all true. But, yeah, no, I thought it was a a big – it was a – you know, seeing big game boomer come out. Like, at this point, I think the people that are in the know and the people that – to Dom's point, the people from Syracuse that don't really know what, you know, real college Like, what – right, like – because you spoke about that last week, right? Where it was like it's a completely different ball game when you go to these games at North Carolina, North Carolina State. You know, I mean, it's, it's a, it actually feels like a college atmosphere. Yes, you know, it, you are in, you are li- growing up in Syracuse and doing, and, and we got to wrap this thing up soon. But going to Syracuse and 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 growing up there and going to games there and not seeing anything outside of that until I'm a grown ass man and being there because it doesn't come across the TV. You know, the Hokies first down, H-O-K-I-E-S, Hokies, you know, every first down, right? Well, definitely not football because I felt the opposite way about basketball coming from the Dome. But, oh, well, yeah, yeah, but tradition, though. I mean, we're just – if you just want to talk about loud, okay, fair. But I'm talking about tradition. And when you talk about tradition, it really is football. It really oh, is, yeah. right? It's a 
It is a whole different animal. And that's what makes the NCAA great. That's what makes the NCAA better than the NFL, in my opinion. Like, leaps and bounds. You just don't have that. And okay. Now you're adding the money back into it, right? Which right. Which was the difference between it in the first place for the True. most part. So. And, and so, you know, how... How long does it stand the test of time as far as that goes? But the one thing that you still do have is you have those traditions. And it's really good to get outside of the bubble and go check that stuff out because it's just amazing. You know, you, you can go to North Carolina and see what they got going on there. And, you know, your team loses, but it's still a freaking great experience. And, and it's just it's just it's a whole nother world, man. And that's yeah, why well, I started doing it because – Nothing against going to the dome, but I've been so many times. I mean, it's like, what do you, you know what I'm saying? It's, you know what I want them to do? I want them to start ranking teams as far as the NIL money that comes from alums and fans and all that kind I of stuff. I wish that then stuff we, was wide open, and maybe it mm -hmm. is, and we just don't have access or don't know where the access is. But yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe at we least, can find that out so that when we get all these fans to talk about all the stuff, we can show them the numbers. Well, you would think because it is college athletics that that stuff has to be disclosed one way or another. Yeah, most likely. Very limited. Very limited. <laughs> uh, as far as the as far as the NCAA, not at all. As far as the government, I think it's very limited. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Well, we may never get all those answers, and there's probably a reason for that too. Well, so. I mean, at the end of the day, look. It, now we can actually 100 percent blame it on the fan support. Well, all you fans that want to blame this person or that person, yeah, you can blame the AD, you can blame the chancellor. There's definitely there's some blame there, bro. There's some there's definitely something there, but it's not Babers. You know I, what I'm saying? Right, like, right. And if they're not going to open up the pocketbook or the checkbook anyway to get a better coach, then <clears throat> what does it really matter? And they can get a better coach, but if we're not getting better players, then what does it really matter? So at the end of the day. It comes down to the guys on the field, and we know how now in this in this environment how how we get those. And it's not necessarily who's the coach; it's necessarily how what they can get. Right. Um, okay. I mean, I think that's going to do it. We talked about going. Yeah, I don't want to do a two-hour podcast, Joe. So I was like, ah, it's not going to be that long. I also didn't know that we okay. were going to have, <clears throat> you know. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, it is what it is. Um, you're going to get our, your fill of us today because we will not be back. Uh, we're going to take, obviously, unless something drastic happens between now and uh, the Virginia Tech, Virginia Tech preview. Take the week off. Take the week off. And so you can listen to this in two parts if you want, if you get sick of us. But uh, we, then we got to regroup, too, during the bye week. Yeah, and we'll figure all that out. A lot. But as of right now, that's going to do it for us really 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 appreciate all of you in the spaces thank you so much you guys have no idea um how that makes the show we appreciate dom and luke for coming on and talking and uh love you guys appreciate everybody listening and downloading for joe i'm sean we're out